Hi, my name is James Bender, and I'm the product manager for Ignite UI and Infragistics.com. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use our Angular components to add an Ignite UI grid to an existing Angular application. Now when I say Angular, what I'm referring to is what used to be referred to as Angular 2, but has since been renamed by Google to just Angular. This is our current app, and you can see we've got some charts in here, and obviously we have some data driving these. I want to add a grid to the bottom of this. So I'm going to go over to Visual Studio Code and add that code to get my chart in this application. I started by downloading the lesson1start.zip file from infrastructure6.com, which had my starting code in it. I unzipped the code, I ran npm install and npm start, and as you can see, the application without the grid is running. In order to use component in Angular, you need to import it first, and this applies to our IG grid component and the grid component that we're going to create that's going to host our grid in our application. You can see here from lines 12 and 13, we're importing the IG grid component from the Ignite UI Angular 2 package, and we're importing grid component from a file we have called grid.component.ts. Now I need to add these components to the declarations for my module, and I'll do that on line 23. Now that I've imported the Ignite UI grid into our application, as well as my grid component here, I need to add some code here to actually put the grid on the page. You can see here I have my grid component class with my component metadata here. I'm importing component on init. And I have this get data function here, which returns just some canned data for us to use. I also have this stocks property up here. What I need to do is bind the output of this get data function to this stocks property. And I'm going to do that in the ng on init function. Now I have a property on my grid component called stocks, which will expose the data for our grid. My grid component has a template URL called grid.component.html. This file contains the HTML markup that's basically going to render out my component when it gets invoked onto the page. We need to update that to actually render our Ignite UI grid. So I'm going to go to that file now. And I'm going to add the code to actually render my grid onto the page. So now our grid component is complete. The next step is I actually need to add our grid component to our application. If I go back to my grid component, you can see I've defined a selector here called grid. This basically defines the tag we're going to use when we want to add it to an HTML template, like our app component template. So I'm going to go back to app component, and I'm going to add that to the bottom of this template. Now if we go back to our application, we can see that we still have our charts, but now we also have a grid with all of our data in it. Now you'll notice we didn't provide Ignite UI with any formatting information from our grid. The columns are clearly labeled, and the data appears to be formatted correctly. But what if we want to have a little bit more control over how this data is formatted? How could we do that? Well, that's easy to do in Ignite UI. We'll go back to Visual Studio, and back in Visual Studio, we need to make a couple changes to our grid component. So we'll go back to grid.component.ts, and we need to add some code to the ng on init function. You can see we've added a few more lines of code here. We're setting the value of this grid ID property to equal grid1, and we're setting the value of this grid options to an object which has some data in it. We're setting the data source to be this.stocks. We're setting auto generate columns to false. This by default is set to true, which is what's causing Ignite UI to look at our data and format our grid based on the data. But since we're not auto generating our columns anymore, we need to provide Ignite UI with some metadata about our columns so that it knows how to render them correctly. And you can see this is an array of objects with some metadata about our columns. We have our header text, which is what appears in the header for each column. We have a key, which maps to a field in our data. And we have a data type, explaining what kind of data we expect this to be. The next step is to update our grid.component.html file to use these new properties we've created. So we'll go to that file, we'll remove the existing line of code, and we'll add a new line of code. In this new line of code, we're binding our options field to grid options, which is the object we created in grid.component.ts, which has our column definitions. We're also binding widget ID to the grid ID property in component.ts as well. If we go back to our application, we can see that the grid has changed a little bit. The column headings are now in all caps, which reflects the settings we created in our grid options object. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful in seeing how easy and fast it is to add the great features of Ignite UI to your Angular applications. Be sure to check out infragistics.com for more information about Ignite UI and all of our other great software development products. Also be sure to check out the other lessons in this series to see even more great ways Ignite UI can help you write fast, run fast, and build great applications for the modern web.